I just completed playing Cyberpunk 2077 last week. I had a game like for, for a year, but I didn't have good FPS in the first patch, so I only played it for like, I think, three or four hours and I waited until the FPS got better. Anyway, so I can just complete the game. And perhaps you feel like me, like you feel this, this type of sadness that it's over. And I just wish there would be more content to just spend time in the city. Not doing missions, not being the hero, saving saving something. It's just, just being a normal guy, having something mundane to do in the city. And so make this video guide so you can sort of create your own scenario that you can play. And for this scenario, I'm going to be a delivery driver that buys illegal cat food and delivers it to specific places. Now, this might not sound very interesting to you, but there's some small tweaks you can do in this game. And I promise you, it's going to be a lot more fun than you might think it was. Okay, so let's get up. I'm using a small amount of mods. However, I'm going to put the mod list at the end of the video with a, with a timer mark so you can check it out at the end and in the text description of the video because I don't want to overload you with mods to download right at the beginning of the video. Okay, so, <clears throat> but they're mostly about how vehicles handle and all that. Okay, so it's early morning, it's 8 a.m. Set the time to that. And I'm going to use a motorcycle. So, in order for this role playing thing to work, I always started in the, in the apartment. <clears throat> I'm going to dress up now so it's fitting for, for the job I'm doing. So it's relatively. It's early in the morning, so I want to dress up for. like somebody would dress up when riding a motorcycle. For that case, I got my, where's my jacket. I like this jacket. You know, I have some fur over here. Looks like a nice motorcycle jacket. Also got a helmet, which I'm going to put on and when I go down to the motorcycle. And I'm going to take a shotgun, in case I got into trouble. Okay, so now I'm going to walk down to the motorcycle. I'm going to explain you a few more things. Now, as you might have noticed, I'm not having a minimap up on the screen. And that's the key thing when you play in this type of roleplay mode, which I, which I devised for this video. The important thing is, at no point in the video, or in, when you're playing like this, you use the minimap. And especially do not use markers to get to places. And that's the key thing about playing like this. And I'm going to explain you why that is the case. Okay, so. So the main reason for that is. So the main reason for that is that if you. Ah, oh, this, this advertising is distracting. So. Because when you play with the minimap on. Then you basically focus if the minimap is up in the corner. And by the way, you can turn it off if you go into hard options and turn it off. Then the game basically tells you a yellow line where, that you have to follow. Okay? The problem with that is it deactivates the part of your mind that uses your spatial sense of, of where you are and where you have to go to orient yourself in the game mode. And I think that sucks out like 90% of the fun of actually driving in this game. Because you just follow the yellow line, you don't um, pay attention to the physical 3D objects like the the game world itself. Okay, so that's why the minimap should always be off. Now you can still check the map to, to figure out where you want to go. Or you shouldn't make any markers on a map like this. Because um, they will show up in the 3D as a quest marker and it's going to ruin the fun of that. So keep that off. Also I would say um, select a quest, if you have one, where you do not have a quest marker that's a location that's sort of like a call. Because then you don't have any quest markers on the game world. Okay, so that's the basic setup. Now what I'm going to do is, there's a small food vendor over here, way out in the, I think there's a growing house or something. I'm going to buy cat food and I'm going to deliver it to two different places. One packet of cat food is going to get delivered to a bus station up here. And the other one is going to go to a clothing shop up here. Okay, so let's get started. I'll probably cut the video into pieces so you don't have to watch me driving all the time. Okay, I forgot putting on a helmet. <clears throat> now we're looking like a realistic motorcycle driver. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now the point here is when you're driving, it's not about um, it's not about 
driving as fast as you can or being like the, the superhero cyber driver or something. It's about driving as safe as you can without hitting anything. And at the end of the video, there's I'm just going to show you some mods that will make driving a bit less twitchy for you. Okay, now it's early in the morning and the sun is coming from the east. Okay. I'm checking the map, I'm over here, I'm pointing to the west with my bike. And I want to go directly south, through the inner city, through Pacifica, and then over here. Now, at the beginning you might have the urge to put quest markers, but as I explained earlier, keep those quest markers off. Because, as you can see right now, I'm not following a yellow line, and I can see I actually have to look at the buildings around me to orient myself. And this activates parts of your mind that are not activated when you're just following a quest marker. And it makes the game world itself a tool to orient yourself. And I think that's like a lot more engaging than a switching quest marker. Okay, let's start driving. And when you're driving like this, um, the fun doesn't come from driving as fast as you can, it's driving from really safe. And uh, the longer you drive safer, you get like a slow, slow burning rush from it. Like it feels more and more rewarding the safer and longer you drive without hitting anything. Okay, let's see. I know I have to go in this general direction, but now I have to orient myself. I can check the map. So there's probably a river over here I have to cross, yeah. So I have to find a large bridge, and I'll probably go through it. I'm using several mods here, which, as I said, I will show you at the end of the video. Um, one is, for example, that the camera doesn't auto recenter. So, for example, here I can see the camera like this, and it doesn't auto recenter. I think that's one of the most important things you have to, uh, when you're driving like that, because the game by default centers your cameras after two seconds. And that really gets in the way of driving. Can you see now? I don't know. If, I don't know how to get up that overpass. So I have to improvise a bit. I'll try that. Go to that overpass and then go to the right, left side. And it gets beautifully addictive the longer you drive like this. You just listen to the beautiful engine sound of the motorcycle. Let's see. I found a proper overpass. Now I'm at the west coast of the city. I'm just going to drive to Pacifica. And if you played the game before, you probably know Pacifica. That's the rundown part of the city. This just feels beautiful. Like the engine sound. Yes. It's a tricky part actually not hitting anything, see? I think that's the main highway going through the city. See, I'm not hitting the pedal full max all the time. I'm just letting go sometimes if I want to brake. Because if you brake manually, it really stops you really hard. And as I said earlier, the fun comes from stacking. It's like a roguelike, except for fighting, it's driving safely. It's like a driving safely roguelike you got going over here. So if you can't see what's ahead of you 200 meters, you don't drive at full speed. You let go of the key like that, let Lisa rid of it. And I'm already having a lot more fun than I had in many other driving games. Because you can just exist as a normal person in this beautiful sci-fi world. But by the way, the bike I'm using is the... Oh, okay, that was bad. That's the um, Arch Nazare. Also, if you get lost with orienting yourself, you can just stop and read the signs on the road. It's Mega Building 6. So let's check the Mega Buildings. They're really good orientation points. Okay, the roadsides over here, Petrochem. Man, look at this beauty. <laughs> okay, now I think I'm somewhere near Pacifica because it gets sort of industrial in the area. So if I keep driving, I'll probably end up in Pacifica. But as you can see, the, um, the camera movement stays exactly where I want it to be. And one thing is, keep driving in first person. Even if you're using a car, just keep first person because you get used to it and then it feels much more, I think, rewarding and enriching. Than, than just using a third-person camera. And you get a much better sense of the speed. Okay, I know that hill, that's sort of the dividing line between Pacifica and the, and the um, eastern areas. Okay, let me check where I am. I think the Pacifica Flats must be in this area. And this is Santo Domingo. I think I have to get past that hill to get to Pacifica. Yeah, it's on the right side of the hill somewhere. And again, I could just check the map, but 
I want to write myself. And as I said, um, looking at a map is not cheating in this game mode, but putting yourself a quest marker where you can drive towards, that's, that's cheating. So yeah, I need to look for landmarks where specific are. That's Santo Domingo. That's the trash hills over there, so I probably have to go this way. Oh man, I'm ecstatic driving this motorcycle like this. And again, it's not like it's driving it super fast, just driving it slowly. I'm probably in the going the right direction here. So again, if you're not wanting to watch the whole video, I'll probably put some markers up so you can just go to the different stations of the video. But I promise you, just driving through the city like that, carefully precise driving and the cycle doing exactly what you want, that's more fun than just going full speed and crashing into stuff. Because again, actually I think it has good driving physics, but um, you need to fine tune the steering with some mods to get it to the point where you want it to be. Okay, let's see. Ah, Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. That's a stadium. Yeah, Pacifica is in that direction. I think I'm on the right way. We'll be going to that overpass in that direction in Atlanta Pacifica. to find a way to the right along the hill. So I'll probably try to find a way to get on that mountain road on the side. Not sure if there's a tunnel I can go through. Probably not. That's that's a dam, so I'll have to go this way. And again, there would be more efficient ways to drive, but just you yourself finding a way, getting lost, orienting yourself and near large landmarks building near large landmark buildings it just activates a part of your mind that you're usually not using and i promise you that it's just a lot more fun than just um using quest markers i made a mistake of playing most of the main game by using quest markers and, and the yellow lines and i think that ruins it okay that over there is the pacifica um, mall i think so yeah i'm on the right way i think here we go also music a mod that actually uh, uses the daytime to realistic um, real-time cycle, which means time is passing like in real life, not like five, six, seven times faster. What? Oh, where did I end up here? I'm going to drive crossroad over here. Uh, because this way I'm setting it to 8 a.m. in the morning, so it's like a morning shift that you're going to walk. And it feels um, more grounded in reality, so if, if the sun is coming uh, from a certain direction, it feels like it's actually morning, and. You don't feel like a whole day is passing, but you're just driving somewhere. And this video is sort of like a model that you can uh, use to make your own mission with it. Basically, the idea is you, you find your own locations you like to deliver stuff to, and you remember them in your mind where they were. And then you find your way to them. Wait a minute. Yep, textures haven't loaded in. Okay, so it's probably in that direction. I think I'm driving past Pacifica for the most part. Yeah, those are the greenhouses, I think. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going the right direction, but uh, I'm going in from, from the wrong road that I usually don't take. Should be the end of those flats.
This might be the map board, is it? Hmm, huh, could be. Okay, now where did I want to go? I see the food shop is over here, so I think I got lost over here somewhere and then I found my way back. Yeah, just have to turn back in the next turn over there. Man, this is just beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> just driving like that. That should be the right way to this side. Hmm. So yeah, my cycle didn't crash yet. I had this one bump of it. As I said, it feels like a roguelike. The, the longer you drive safe, the, the, the more exciting it gets. And you actually get angry if, if you drive safe for a long time and you just crash into something. It actually makes you <laughs> angry like that. Yeah, that's an obstacle. Where is the food shop? Over there, okay. I'll just have to get around it. Also, if you're wondering how I'm able to, to drive this precisely with just a keyboard and mouse, those are some tweaks and, and mods I'm using. I'm using some mods and I'm fine-tuning some variables in those mods. And I think I got it really right for this bicycle. Because most of the fun from driving, you get the fun when you get the when you get the cycle or the, the vehicle to do exactly what you want it to do. Like when you fine-tune it just right. Because the game has really good driving physics underlying the whole thing, but I think it's just the default settings are really messed up. Okay, should be really close to that food place. Ah, there it is. Can I park this cycle over here? I'm going to take off the helmet. There are different places where you can buy cat food, but I'm just imagining my role play story. That's the place where I buy it. Where's the cat food? Ah, oh, there it is. No, I just need two units because I'm delivering two of them. Confirm. And back to the circle. By the way, back should be faster. And I have to place someone to deliver it to. For roleplay purposes, I go to the back of the bike, open stash. And where's the cat food? Oh wait, it's inventory. Yeah, where is the cat food? Well, not technically the stash is where you put, uh, it's also in your flat, but for roleplay purposes, I just put it in the back of the bike. Now, if you use a, a car instead of a bicycle, there's a really cool animation. You can actually open the, um, you can open the, what do you call it? The, um, the trunk. Okay, now we put back our motorcycle. Go. Okay, now let's plan our route a bit better. Okay, I take the next right, drive straight through Pacifica. And I'm going to drive over here to, it's over here, it's in Westbrook Charter Hill. So I'm going through the entire city center, probably stay on the main road. You can get. But the thing is, if you would just use quest markers, like right click and it give you like the location to drive to, 
it's too easy because you see a 3D mark on a game world. And just this, this whole feeling of getting lost and orienting yourself, it, it's multiplying the fun you can have. That's why I'm not using quest markers. Okay, here we go. So as I'm driving, it's probably going to be a big stretch of driving. So the mods I'm basically using is uh, the cyber vehicle overhaul, and I'm tweaked, I tweaked I tweaked the the steering specifically to this motorcycle because you have to tweak it the, the steering down to like uh, about uh, 200 times lower than it is normally. I'm not joking, 200 times lower at least because they're super twitchy those bikes. And the actual engine torque, like the total engine power of this bike, is actually halved by 50 percent. Because the reason for that I'm doing it is because in normal city driving, you would never drive at max speed. It would get in your way too much. And the game currently cannot um, simulate soft pedal presses. So I just um, half the engine torque. And as you can see, it's, it's still extremely fast. And again, the goal is not extreme top speed. It's just safe, realistic driving. Yeah, smooth steering. Just feels good. And the one important thing is that you can, the camera doesn't have auto center, see? So I can keep it like this. Because the thing is, if you keep the camera like this, uh, you see more of your own bike, and for depth perception, it helps you to orient yourself in the game world. Because the default camera angle is like this, almost. So you can barely see where you're at. But if you feel like this, you have something in close proximity that tells you um, where your bike is. And it helps a lot with driving. I see that specific one. Just going to go drive straight north through the city. The central island, and take the channel, and then go left, and then the other way. Man, this is fun. Just a smooth and safe driving. <laughs> so you gotta anticipate if you got some uh, obstacles coming in. The thing is with the motorcycles, or vehicles in general in this game, is that. Um, they are super twitchy in, in when it's at low speed. Like the steering is much more aggressive in slow speed. And the faster you drive, the, the tighter it gets and more control becomes. I think this game got unfairly treated uh, with the driving physics. Like the underlying driving physics are actually really good. If you look at some of the code that mods are editing with, with Lua code, it's a pretty deep simulation of, of, of engine torque and all that. But the default steering settings are just so bad that it feels really bad. Mega building three, mega building one. I think the oh, my own apartment is mega building ten. Like that's the default apartment you get. Man, look at this. <laughs> Ooh, this is fun. I'm letting go of gas because I want to see what's in front of me. Let it, it might not seem like much, but I'm having an extreme amount of fun right now with this game. It's just. Just smooth, beautiful driving. <laughs> okay, Mega Building 5. I'm gonna go to the left side. Like, this, uh, there's a deep, deep sense of fun you get in this game. I mean, the driving just does exactly what you want, like here with the with the steering. And as I mentioned at the end of the video, this, uh, I'm going to explain you how to install the mods and I'm going to put it in text form too. Sanaday, if you tells you which city part you're in. Glen Haywood, that's I think south of the center, is it? Man, this feels beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, again, the goal is... Oh, not bumping into stuff. What does the city say? Koryama, that's Japantown, I think. I think that's one of the channels uh, going east-west through the city. That should be the center island. Actually, I have to go to this place over there. If I'm correct. And that's basically all it takes in this game, to have fun. Find you in your controls with mods. Let the camera do what you want to do with mods and just turn off the minimap and orient yourself in the 3D game world. Like just looking at the objects to the actual 3D objects, not an abstraction of them like a yellow line, just the objects to let you to orient yourself. And I think you're going to have a lot more fun in this game. And if you're lucky enough to, no, I wouldn't sound this arrogant like lucky enough that you watched the video. What I mean is that if you haven't completed the game yet, the main campaign, and you're watching this video, try it right now. Like turn off your minimap and remove the markers. If you have to go to a mission, just drive there, orient yourself. You probably triple the amount of game fun you're going to have in this game because of all the time you spend extra driving to places. Now, some people might call this a time sink, but if you have good driving physics, that's, I think, time well spent. Okay, wait, I think I'm somewhere below the known apartment mega building, is it? I think I'm somewhere in my own apartment. <clears throat> Wait, I gotta check the map right now. Okay. Yep. So again, I have to get to, where is it? Over here and then outside over there. Which means I have to go down and keep on the left and then over the channel. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'll probably cut the video into pieces um, if I'm getting lost like that. As you can see here, I'm just trying to get from A to B and like the amount of extra fun you get from just orienting yourself in this game. It's just beautiful. Should we close my first delivery stop over here? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just follow the beach area and should be over here. Probably uh, 800 meters or something. So. And see, it's different when you when you drive like that. It's not the yellow line. It's okay. I'm have to find the water. Stay close to the water. I think many games make that mistake where they spoon feed everything to the player, like every quest mark, every direction, every turn you have to take. And there's so many parts of your mind that get deactivated when they spoon feed you that. Man, this is fun. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So probably close to where I want to go. Yep, exactly where I want to go. It's a garage, it's a hotel. Wait, is that the, isn't it? I think it should be in the hotel yard. I'll just park here. Okay, let me check. Yeah, it's just around the corner. Ah, 
just right there. Okay. Inventory. Okay, now press X for drop. And we're dropping one of those only. That's just for all the purposes. And I dropped it. So, cat food number one delivered. Let's get back to the bike. And the second delivery is um, outside of the city on the east side. And this place is beautiful. I think it should be right around the corner, is it? Wait, it should be here, I think. Sometimes you just gotta go slow and take in the beauty. Look at this. I can imagine how beautiful it would be just like having an apartment somewhere in this skyscraper and just going in there drinking coffee. Ah, oh, there's my bike. And now we drive out of the city. Okay, the next delivery is the bus station over here. I have just to get out of the city, so what route should I take? Get out, go th straight through Santo Domingo, and then find a way to the main roads. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Dangerous. <clears> hmm, <throat> can I actually pass that area? It'd be there. It looks like a roadblock, is it? Okay, go left, then right straight up, yep. I guess the police are going to leave me alone. And go up the overpass, and it should be golden. to take the overpass down to the main road in this direction. It's probably incoming traffic, so you gotta be careful. And now it's just straight driving. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think it, what makes it fun is not just fast driving, it's the slow city navigation, a bit of walking navigation, then difficult part, and then they have these long stretches where you're just driving. Because if, if all the driving is super fast or all super slow, you get used to it, then, then it loses its effect. Like a nice menu of, of eating something. You have to balance the different things out of it. And I'm playing this on an old 1060 card, so the FPS might not be that good, but eh, it's good enough to drive. Oh, that's the motel that's close to the place I want to go. But the motel is currently occupied by uh, hostile troops. Because it's relatively late in the game. I would say really, right late in the game, so uh, that's a location for some combat, so...
I'd have missed the exit over here. Check the map. Actually, I'm not. I haven't missed it. Okay, two more on the left. I think that's the first exit, now the next one. Notice how the cars get more and more armored over here. <laughs> it's a drive out of the city. And we should be close to the bus stop. Okay, now we drop the cat food. <coughs> Now we can drive back home. Okay, so I find my way back to the main road. And just drive it straight the main highway up to... And if I manage to make it up here to Westbrook, Japantown, stay on the highway, then when the industrial area starts, get off the highway at this point and then just drive back into the garage. The problem is with... Um, the original garage, it's really hard to get to because there's like an underpass under it. So oh, here we go. Need to cut through the brushes over here. And off we go. And as you play like that, you basically get to know the city. You, you learn the landmarks, you know what directions to go, where you want to go. Then you can basically, the way you can play the game is just have a friend that also knows the game. Like, pick a location for you, and for you then to draft it as a new delivery location. And then you just stack the roguelike fun of just driving without, without crashing into stuff. And the longer you drive, the more fun you're going to feel. It's like the slow burn fun that just slowly stacks up like this. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm driving this, this bicycle at, this motorbike, at about half the torque that it actually has in the game. I edited uh, the config file because you would rarely ever drive this thing at full speed, and it, in city driving it's a bit too, too fast for that. That's why I lowered the engine torque.
Yeah, that's an outsider. That's a person that's not living in a city with has a car like that. <laughs> Love how the game like blends into Mad Max territory like um, after after some time. Should be on the main highway, just stay on that. I think I'm still in Santo Domingo. Oh, that was close. Now, at this point, it's getting hypnotic for me. That's like that slow burn fun that just keeps stacking like that. I think I'm passing through Japan Town. I should be overshooting um, the home building, the mega building town. Why am I still in Japan Town? I think it looks still like Japan Town. Well Springs. I think it's in a, it's in the north of the city, is it? I think it is. You should probably stop and, and read some signs. Man, I'm having too much fun here. <laughs> they want to stop driving. Oh, yeah, here comes the speed. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Man. Playing this with VR must be amazing fun. If, I'm not sure if VR is possible in this game. But I would buy it full price if, if, if I had a VR set. Just give me a VR on this game. Just driving a cycle like that. Ah. See, now I'm angry. Now I screwed up my, my roguelike um, stack. Wait, wait. That's Pacifica, is it? Where the hell did I go? Oh, I like drove all the way over here. Because over here I couldn't stop driving. I had too much fun, so I just circled around it and I overshot my, my area like <laughs> yeah I gotta drive back north okay let me check yeah I should read those signs a bit better Try this way. I think I should be in the right path right now.
have to cross the river before I get to my pot. What the hell is the river on this place? Uh, Should be up there over there somewhere. Should have to go this way and then cross over. Oh, did I find the end of the map? Okay, just have to turn on that. <clears throat> oh yeah, I got on the main highway, that's good. That was stupid, that was my own mistake. <laughs> okay, now on the main highway. So I probably might cut the video into pieces because they probably don't want to watch me like driving around for 50 minutes. Okay, I crossed the river, so I should get off the highway and find Mega Building Tank Garage. Should be, yeah, that's Mega Building Tank, that's home. It's a bit tricky to get to it because there's an underpass directly below it. <laughs> That's actually not a garage entrance. Um, okay. You want ah, there it is. Of course, you can park the car wherever you want, just get it with pressing B and just call it back. But, like, for the whole roleplay purpose, I just want to. Because the more you do this. Um... Wait, I'm just gonna park it. Okay, so. I've made it back. Now, probably, if you watch this video, I probably skipped or fast forwarded through certain areas because the video is probably an hour long if, if I would play it in one go. So, I'm not sure how I'm going to edit it. When you watch it, you probably know it because. Um, while you're watching it, but right now, at the moment I'm recording it, I'm not sure how I'm going to edit it yet. So anyway, so I just made it back with the motorbike. I delivered to the two places, I got the cat food delivered, and I can take off the motorcycle helmet and the shotgun. <clears throat> and I should take off the jacket too. Okay, and I'm just casually, I have my slow walkie um, toggled to caps lock. So I'm going to um, summarize what I did in this this type of custom game mode, and then I'm going to show you which mod I'm using and how to find you them. And I probably have video um, timer marks, so you can just skip to the parts you want. So, so the key points to take away were 
you turn off your minimap and the HUD settings. That's the most important thing because, as I explained a few times in the video, but you might have, I might have edited it out, is that if you have the minimap up in the corner over here of the screen and you have those markers, then you're just following a yellow line and the game filters for you what you have to watch for for navigating. However, if you turn all of that off, then you're using the actual 3D game world, the buildings, the roads, to orient yourself. And that activates a different part of your mind, which makes the game experience, I think, 10 times richer than it usually would be. And the same is for quest markers. So I, ca I selected a quest because you can never turn it off completely. Selected a quest, that's where you have to call somebody, so you don't have a quest marker that's pointing at a certain area. Also, I keep, I keep these uh, right-click markers off completely because they give you like a 3D mark in the game world, which is a quest mark you can follow. I think that sort of ruins the fun of it. So I'm going back to my apartment, and then this game cycle is over. And the thing is, when you play this yourself, you can make up your own missions. For example, you can make it like a night shift. Instead of cat food, maybe you're delivering guns, you bought a shotgun, and you have to deliver it to some shady part of of the city. For example, you know, there's this one place in the city, in the harbor, where this, uh, this cargo ship is parked. Maybe you have to deliver the shotgun and put it next to, in, in a car trunk that's parked in the parking lot there. You know, make your own missions like that. And... What else do I want to say? So yeah, basically you make up your own missions, and then you drive to those places without using 3D markers or quest markers. And I promise you, it's going to be an extremely rich driving experience. And I'm going to go into my apartment. Then I'm going to switch the video to showing you the different, um, the different mods you can use. Okay, now I want to talk about the mods part. I kept this to the end of the video because I want to overload you with different mods right at the beginning of the game mod. So, the very first thing you want to do is you go into the you go into the game options, and you set. Uh, I think it's on the game. Is it in the gameplay? Uh, what is it? It's under control. Yeah, it's under controls. You set steering sensitivity to one, the absolute minimum. The next thing you do, you go to interface and you turn off your minimap and you turn off the crosshair, that's just preference, then you turn off the drop tracker. And I have no idea what Johnny Silverhand, how the elements actually does. <clears throat> because then you get all the quest marker, all the, the, the quest um, things in the corner of the screen and gone. And now let's talk about the different mods you can use. Or you, have, you should be using for it to be um, more engaging. Okay, so uh, I downloaded them from, from the Nexus, which is the site you can get all the Cyberpunk mods. And I downloaded those four mods, and I think I used them and you download and install them in, in, this, in this sequence. Firstly, the Cyber Engine Tweaks, that's like a base mod that allows other mods to use certain variables in the game. So you download this one, install it, then the Cyber Vehicle Overhaul, then Red 4X, which is some script extending things, which you need for no camera auto centering. And this one has two different files, and you install both of them. One is for third person, one is for first person. Now, those two mods are prerequisites for the other two mods. And the cyber vehicle overhaul has some steering tweaks and um, vehicle tweaks. And the no camera auto centering, basically what it does is <clears throat> the game by default, after two seconds, centers your mouse view camera onto center. That's extremely irritating when you're driving. And that mod turns it off. So you install those, it's, it's pretty easy. You download the file and you just drop it with the whole folder structure in the particular folder, it's really easy. You have, there's nothing else to do, you just drop them in there. Then you go to the init Lua of the Cyber Engine Tweaks mod Cyber Vehicle Overhaul. It's over here, that's a, the file path. Init Lua, okay. Now there's several variables that you can change. And for driving with the Arch Nazari, with the motor motorbike I'm using here, you need to change this one it's 1.00, I need to change it to 0 0.01. This basically makes driving 100 times more sensitive. However, this variable is specifically tuned for motorcycles. If you're driving a, a normal car, not a, then you should use a value of 0 0.3. Not 0 0.13, but 0 0.3. And here's one more important thing to fix the oversteering. 
need to set term max up mult to 1.5 instead of 1.0. What it basically does, it speeds up the recentering of your wheels, which means the moment you let go of the AOD keys, uh, it recenters. So you don't get stuck in the oversteering that the default game likes to do. And now if you're using the same bike, I'm using the Arch Nazare, then in this file, which is Cyberweekle Overhaul, Modules, Arch, Superbike, Tweak, Lua, you go to the max torque and change it from 200 to 100, which halves the engine power by 50%. However, as explained in the video a few times, um, the reason I'm doing this is because in real life, when you drive in dense traffic, you would never hit the pedal to the max to accelerate as fast as you can. You probably would do 30-50% of what you would do in full speed. So reaching max speed is going to take much longer. However, you will have much more uh, responsive driving experience. So that's the mod setup. And to recap the whole thing again, if you watch to the end of the video. So the first thing you want to do is turn off the minimaps. Then avoid to um, <clears throat> avoid clicking on certain areas of the map to get yourself markers and turn off all the quests. And then you fine tune those, those driving mods and just keep driving.